What's in my project bag? Hi everyone, Norman here. Today I want to talk about my favorite knitting tools. All the things I use for my personal knitting and the tools I came to enjoy the most after years and years of experience as a continental knitter. Now, frequent viewers might know that I am a strong proponent of not sharing my bias here on my channel. There is not the best knitting technique or the best knitting needle. It all depends on your preferences and your body. So I feel it would be very counterproductive if I constantly praised one knitting needle brand over another. On top of that, most of the tools that I'm showing here in my videos get picked because of their visual qualities. After all, knitting with black fuzzy uh, fingering weight mohair yarn and black needles might not get the idea across. At the same time, I do get a lot of questions about the tools that I'm using. So I thought it would be fun to share the knitting needles, the yarn and so on that I keep constantly in my project bag. So let's dive right into it and show you all the knitting tools I cannot live without. Let's start with my project bags. I love, love, love these Mood project bags. Mood is a Scandinavian brand and they produce these super fine uh, leather knitting accessories. Now they are pricey. I think this bag, this little bag here alone costs around 150 US dollars or so. Definitely not on the cheap side. But there is no denying they are super pretty. And the reason I love them so much is because they make so much sense. So you have little compartments here all around and you feed the yarn here through the opening at the front and here on the inside you have little little pockets as well where you can put you know crochet hook knitting needles and so on and here there is another little pocket with a zipper. So in the bigger version comes with a strap so you can actually carry it around like a real bag. But of course if I was just knitting at home this project bag would probably be a big waste of money. You can get a nice project bag on Amazon for a tenth of that money. However, I do travel a lot. So leather is not only quite as sturdy and durable, it also looks a bit more fashionable. Call me Wayne, but when I'm boarding a plane or a train or just sitting in the waiting room at the doctor's, I mean, this really looks like a bag and it, you know, makes me feel Feel a bit more comfortable with my knitting in public. I'll add links to the description in case you want to buy one. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get any money. You know, I just like them. When it comes to knitting needles, I am a huge fan of Knitter's Pride or Knit Pro, how they are marketed here in Europe. I actually don't knit with their wooden needles. These are called Dreams or Symphony. You see so often here on my channel. I just pick them because they look pretty, offer a nice contrast and are small enough to work in the confined space of my recording booth where a big circular needles or so would just get in the way and produce a lot of extra noise. I mean these are nice but uh, I guess for me personally wooden needles are a bit too slow. Now I almost exclusively knit with needle size 3 millimeters or below and my go-to size is actually 2 millimeters. And together with the fact that I am a tight knitter, I haven't found a single needle that's better than these carbons needles. I use the DPNs and the uh, fixed circulars. While I have an interchangeable set, I well, I will typically use the Nova Platina for the larger sizes because these interchangeable needles don't can't go below size 3 millimeters. I wish the tips were a little bit sharper. So for outright lace projects and projects with complicated stitches, I will typically use the higher higher needles. I personally don't like stainless steel and uncoated needles all that much, but I guess it's less annoying than making five attempts to knit that pearl three together through the back loop every time. 
For plain stock and stitch projects, I will often use the Adi circular needles. So I love how fast they are and the product is really, really well done. I am not the biggest fan of their, you know, the way their interchangeable knitting needles that works. I, I mean, I, I hate screws and this click mechanism is really a good thing. But for me personally, I just, you know, it never really clicked. One thing I will have to add is that I personally almost hate chagu needles. I know hate is a strong word and I'm very very happy for anyone who enjoys these needles so much and found needles that work so well for them. But for me personally, they just everything I don't want or need. So I hate these uh, super rigid cables uh, that make it so difficult to knit traveling magic loop. I don't like the stainless steel that makes this very annoying noise when you are knitting and for me you know these joints um, they often come undone when knitting and uh, you know all these different cord sizes you need you know three of them and then you need adapters and uh, grippers and whatnot it just feels needlessly complicated and expensive but you know that is just me one thing I use quite frequently are these uh, tw shorties. Um, this, um, I have this twist short combo here and I don't actually knit with them. I think they're supposed uh, for sock knitters or so and I just can't make that work. However, these are the perfect stitch holder. So whenever you need to put some stitches on hold, I just pick up the stitches here with this little short needle. Then I remove the tip, put on a needle stopper and there is your very, very nice nice stitch holder that makes it super easy to pick up the stitches again so that's what I use. I also have a collection of special knitting needles here are just some of them I just wanted to show them to you because they are just so pretty. So here we have some made out of glass isn't this gorgeous they're produced by Michael and Sheila Ernst then here we have some uh oops pure uh, sterling civil needles. I am not sure. I don't think they are produced anymore, sadly. Or here we have some ebony needles and oh look here, these are super special as well. These are porcupine uh, knitting needles, the, the locals in Bhutan used for their knitting. When they are not in my project bag, I typically store my needles in these Bodolina cases. They are by far the best I ever found. These patented bags are efficient and super pretty and it truly changed the way I organize my needles. Look how many needles you can get fit into this small pouch. Truly amazing, so pretty. Now, of course, there's also some yarn in my project back here on my channel. I typically use the Schachenmeyer Catania Grande, but I don't use this yarn for my private knitting. It's just something I picked because it comes in nice colors, is reasonably inexpensive, has a nice stitch definition and shows well on camera. For my private knitting, I prefer to buy directly from a local dyer or manufacturer. I actually rarely buy yarn at the yarn shop and I try to avoid buying internationally uh, whenever possible because, you know, it just adds to the already huge carbon footprint. I personally prefer uh, solid colors and it will be a very, very rare day that you see me knitting with a colorway. When I want colors in my projects, I typically knit in Taja because I want full control over the finished look of my projects. And you know, these modern colorways with speckles and often the fanciest names ever, well, for me, they never work out and often it I don't know it I feel it makes my finished projects look a bit homemade so but that's just me in terms of yarn qualities I prefer natural fibers and soft fibers I'm a very sensitive person and 
the average cheap wool from Europe, it's just nothing I can wear comfortably. Besides, I always feel like if I'm going to spend the next 40 hours or so holding that yarn in my hand, why not make the process enjoyable on top of that and, you know, not have sandpaper grinding down your fingers. I really love, love, love the Wollmeister sock yarn and the lace yarn. I don't like the DK quality, but sock and lace is amazing. They come in every color you could ever imagine and then some. The stitch definition is just as great as the color and it's very, very uniform. Sometimes I wish it was twisted a little bit less, but otherwise it's just such a great yarn. I also used to love Pasquali Filati Naturali. They have some great exotic fibers all in a very, very nice quality. Some of them even certified. In recent months, they discontinued some of my favorite yarns uh, and introduced new qualities I wasn't too big a fan of. So let's see how things continue. For example, this yak yarn here was seriously one of the best yarns I ever had the uh, chance to knit with. Sadly, they don't sell it anymore. One of my go-to yarns is also the Schachmeier Regia Vorplei. It's not an exciting yarn by all means. However, it is extremely sturdy and near indestructible. A yarn perfect for those fine socks that should last a lifetime. It's, so it's not the softest yarn. I mean, it's not scratchy, but it's not merino soft. And it has a nice stitch definition, but not perfect. Still, it comes in tons of different colors, it's inexpensive, and you know it will still be available in the exact same quality in 20 years to come. So not to gross you out, but here are some sock liners I knitted, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, and they go together with these traditional Bavarian half socks. And I mean, you can tell I wore these so much to local festivals, and these are very rough affairs where I would wear them for 12 hours straight dancing and so on. And I mean, you know, I, they picked up some leather dye from the shoes I can't get rid of anymore, but look at these heels here. No felting, little pilling and not worn thin either. Here this is the way things look like. And I wore these, I don't know, 200, 300, I don't know how many hours I wore these socks jumping around on the beer benches and so. And I guess that is why I love the Regia yarn so much for these kind of projects because you know they will last. For sock knitting I also really appreciate Sameline Dye Works. She is a small indie yarn dyer here in Germany and it took a while to get accustomed to her yarns mainly because they are more seamy than solid and uh, but now I'm madly in love with her sock yarn, the nylon blend in particular. It has just such a nice stitch definition and luster. Besides she also offers custom dyes and that's just great. I think once I ordered on Sunday and I received the package with my three skeins on Wednesday or so so perfect service. The last brand I want to mention here is Wolle Rödel. It's a local manufacturer here in Germany and I just love their alpaca yarn. I don't use their other yarns but uh, their baby alpaca yarn is just so lovely. I love the colors and I knitted quite a lot of toys with it. You know, little bunnies or so. I wish I could show you some but they were all gifts and I gave them away. Number four, scissors. There is probably no topic I get more questions about than my scissors. I have a huge collection of them and if you know a place that sells antique or special scissors, definitely comment below or send me an email. I always love to find new exciting things to add to my collection. Now some of them like these here. They are antique scissors made from pure gold or these here. These are uh, from a silver gold alloy, very special, not for sale, obviously. The downright best scissors I own are these here by Jean-Marie Rouleau. They are expensive as hell, but the pure craftsmanship is downright out of this world. The way it cuts, it's, well, you know, just perfection. 
I also love these Sayu uh, scissors. They are super pretty, handcrafted as well. But when I mean they're really good. But when you compare them with the Jean Marie Rouleau, they are worlds apart in terms of the cutting precision. And it's difficult to talk about this, but once you cut a thread with either a uh, scissor, you will instantly know what I'm talking about. One of my favorite scissors are these stork scissors here. You can find them around every corner these days, but these are very special to me. I bought them on a market in Bukhara, Uzbekistan. They are handcrafted. And I think that's the place they originally came from anyway. And they came with this little embroidered case. And what makes these scissors special is that they also have a very, very good cut. They may look like the cheap ones you get on Amazon for five dollars or so but there is actually a huge difference. Now at the end of the day simple yarn snips will do perfectly for knitting. I trust you understand that your knitting will not be better because you own scissors that cost 500 US dollar or more pretty as they may be. Stitch markers. I always carry stitch markers in my project bag. However, I don't really use these fancy ones at all. I use them for photo shoots and so, but for my everyday knitting, I only use these um, bulb shaped ones. They are light. Uh, you can open them and close them really easy and that's just perfect. Uh, these here, I mean, they might look really pretty, but I feel they just don't work very well. They are often too heavy. The eyelet can be just a little bit too small for bigger needle sizes. It can be very difficult uh, to open them or, you know, sometimes they just flip around uh, and get in the way of your knitting. So all things considered, I only use these bulb shaped ones, but uh, other than the cast on and maybe to mark the center of a shawl, I'm not really using stitch markers anyway. I also always have a row counter in my project bag and I use these digital ones. They are very, very cheap and do the job. There are also these manual ones here where you have to turn things. The advantage is certainly that you can attach them to your project and thus you will never forget to trigger them. But it's a lot more cumbersome than just pressing the button. So I personally stick to the digital ones and come my rows if I think I missed the row. There is also always a tape measure in my project bag. This one here is sold by Sayu. It's not 100% accurate, probably because the fabric stretch out over time a little bit, but I just love the way it looks. And you know, it's not like I'm constructing a rocket. If I have to note uh, the gauge for my patterns that I publish, I of course use a proper ruler, but for my private knitting, this uh, does uh, the job. And you know, knitting is a very private affair and I try to surround myself with pretty things that inspire me and calm me. And this is just one of the little items that brings me joy. Frequent viewers might already know that I always carry one of these neck lights in my project bag. They are a true blessing. I mean, they do make you look a little bit nerdy, but who cares? At least you can see your stitches perfectly, even when you're knitting with a dark yarn. I don't actually think the brand matters. You know, just go to Amazon and pick the one with the best reviews. These batteries, they won't last forever, but they are quick to recharge and these things cost like 10, 15, 20 ish dollars. So they are quite affordable and make such a huge difference. Seriously, the single best investment I ever made in knitting and judging from the many comments I received from uh, knitters who followed my advice, I am certainly not alone. Then there are always some tapestry needles in my project bag. I don't get a special brand and I don't really believe it matters. What does matter in my opinion is that they are available in different sizes and you also have some sharp ones uh, along with the typical blunt ones. Because for weaving in ends, if you ask me, there is nothing worse than trying to wiggle your way through with a blunt needle that is way too big. I can well imagine how this uh, would make you hate 
hate weaving in ends, whereas these sharp tapestry needles, ouch, just glide through your fabric like butter and it's much faster and more secure. I also have some lovely uh, retro needles here from by Sayu. And for embroidery, they are quite lovely. But for knitting, I don't think you need to buy tapestry needles from a premium brand. It's not like you will spend much time with them. The last thing I always carry in my project bag is a little emery board. There's nothing more annoying than when the yarn gets caught because your fingernail decided to leave its manicured perfection. And some people also put a little bit of hand lotion in their project bag for similar reasons. I typically don't, but I have these tubes standing around the whole apartment. That's the brand I'm currently using. It's quite pricey. So I only buy a batch when they are on sale. We are back in my living room and I really hope you enjoyed this little presentation of all the knitting tools that I keep in my project bag and use on a daily basis. Once again, I want to make sure you understand that these are the tools that work best for me. Depending on your preferences and the projects you like to knit, other tools might be better for you. So before you commit a huge amount of money, consider testing a new product out. Maybe you can borrow one from a knitting friend or instead of buying the full set of interchangeable knitting needles, just buy a pair. They are sold separately after all. On top of that, I really urge you to think long and hard about whether you really need those new knitting needles or not. I mean, this is a hobby, so definitely do what brings you joy. Ever so often, it's very important to indulge yourself and buy that fancy yarn or needle set to celebrate an important milestone or so. Luckily, most knitting tools are not that kind of expensive that it will make the average employee go dead broke, you know, as long as you don't go on a wild shopping spree. At the same time, knitting is a lovely alternative to fast fashion and I kind of feel that you should be careful that you don't bring overconsumption as the second mice of our modern society into your hobby. I mean, I always kind of say buy cheap and you buy twice, but I definitely make a conscious effort to analyze my spanning habits and I typically don't buy anything. I don't have a clear vision or plan for or storage space. Also, do know that this is my job. I literally do nothing else but knitting and producing knitting content all day. So try to stay away from falling into the trap of comparing the sheer amount of uh, tools and yarn I own with what seems reasonable for the average knitter. Because you know, I probably own a thousand knitting needles, but let's say that one set would probably be enough to cover 95% of my project. Anyway, that was my little sneak peek into my project bag and all the knitting tools I enjoy the most. Please like this video if you enjoy watching, comment with your questions and your feedback. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.